from where the news comes first. This is News Channel 2 at 11. Tonight, Tractor Supply Company is hiring, and we're walking you through the hiring process. Also tonight, the local Red Cross is on the front lines of Hurricane Florence. Two local volunteers heading south. And West Winfield remembers those who lost their lives on this fateful day 17 years ago. Good evening at 11 o'clock. I'm Don Schiffman. Special ceremonies were held in New York Mills and West Winfield this evening to pay tribute to those who lost their lives 17 years ago during the 9-11 terror attacks. And right now, a tribute in light shining up through lower Manhattan. You can barely see it in this live picture right here. Very foggy this evening in New York on a very somber day. Here's reporter Chris Pallone. Outside Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the voices of 40 United Flight 93 passengers will live on long after their deaths. 40 wind chimes dedicated to their memories will hang in a tower forever at the field where they died after becoming unsuspecting and unlikely heroes. They boarded the plane as strangers and they entered eternity linked forever as true heroes. President Donald Trump lauded their sacrifice in stopping hijackers from reaching their intended target. This memorial is now a message to the world. America will never, ever submit to tyranny. As a nation, Americans vowed never to forget the 3,000 innocent victims of the September 11th terrorist attacks. And so even 17 years later, they paused to tell their stories. at the Pentagon. We commit ourselves to remembering and honoring the lives that might have been. We keep faith with the innocent who perished. And in New York. The epicenter, literally ground zero of the attack, where children have grown up before our eyes, repeating the name of a father or mother, sister or brother, so we, the nation, the world won't forget them. We we'll always love you and I'll never forget you. And we won't because we promised we never would. Chris Pallone, NBC News, New York. And you've likely seen the hashtag on Twitter and other social media platforms, hashtag never forget. That's happening on the local level as well at Mount Markham High School in West Winfield this evening. Just about 100 people gathering in the auditorium of the high school for the 11th annual Mount Markham Remembrance crowd heard speeches from political dignitaries, some of whom were in New York City on September 11th. They also listened to patriotic music as Gold Star families and first responders and military personnel were recognized. The world's changed since then. You know, I have a 14-year-old and uh, he asked me, you know, about what's, what happened on 9-11. Of course, we tell him about it. And then we exp try to explain how the world's changed from 2001 to 2018, it's like going to a sporting event, you get winded down. If you go to, if you take a, uh, you know, during air travel, uh, it's, a, it's a whole series of checkpoints to get through. Before that, it wasn't like that. And following this ceremony, those in attendance enjoyed some refreshments in the cafeteria. And in the meantime, in New York Mills this evening, people lining the streets and Marching in honor of those who died in the attacks, this is a silent march. It's become a somber yet optimistic tradition in New York Mills. Both first responders, community members, and the Boy Scouts marching together as a few people with American flags watch from the sidewalks. It's um, important to remember the people that sacrificed their lives and everything that's come from this, I mean, the country as a whole, I think, has become a better nation. We've come together, and it's something that we should just never forget, and we should never forget the first responders and just the people that sacrificed their lives so that we could continue to enjoy the freedom that we do. After the silent march, there was a ceremony at the 9-11 Memorial near the post office there where roses were placed on the memorial in remembrance of those who died. Now, like we mentioned, 
There were several local remembrance ceremonies that took place throughout the local area today and in Utica with the Utica De Fire Department's memorial event, also the Genesis Group's annual breakfast. We took you there earlier in the broadcast at 5 and at 6. Also a day of service, a day of giving back today. The Veterans Outreach Center spearheading this and then Cooperstown, a number of flags in front of a church there. You can read all about those at WKTV.com. We're getting a first look at the forecast tonight from Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardis. All right, we're looking at the tower cams, just looking for the fog to roll in. It hasn't happened yet, but we do think it's going to happen by tomorrow morning. So just be prepared for that as you're heading out and about, heading to work or school. I think the fog is going to be pretty thick in the lower elevations. This is a live look at the radar. Things are looking pretty quiet across the region. Here's the latest out of the National Hurricane Center. Uh, Florence has not changed in intensity. The 11 p.m. update coming in with winds at 140 miles an hour. It's maintaining the same course it did earlier today. And this is a look at uh, some of the latest imagery out of that. Uh, a very well put together storm. We'll look at some of the latest information on its track coming up in just a bit. 66 degrees is the current temperature. Our weather headlines are talking about fog tonight, warmer conditions tomorrow, and it's going to feel more like summer than fall over the next several days. We're down to 58 degrees tonight and we're tracking fog tomorrow morning. Uh, but we do expect to see some sunshine by later in the afternoon. Have a look at your Storm Tracker 2 seven day forecast, and that's coming up. Don, back to you. Two local Red Cross workers are headed to North Carolina to help during Hurricane Florence. Adam Hole is from Utica, and Donald Lamina is from Oneonta. And they're going to be in North Carolina for at least two weeks, helping during and after the storm. Some of the things that they're going to be doing, helping with sheltering and feeding and providing mental health support. Hull says that he plays a major role in planning. The intensity of the storm will dictate where he goes next. What our main focus will be is setting up uh, evacuation shelters and getting the, the people and the supplies in place in order to, to weather the storm and, and make sure that um, members of the community, but also our workers are, are as safe as possible when Hurricane Florence hits. Afterwards, we'll have people already on the ground as well as supplies on the ground to, to begin um, doing an initial uh, assessment of, of the damage and start providing assistance to, to people that have been uh, impacted. So locally those two are helping, but you can help as well by donating to the American Red Cross. We have a link at WKTV.com. Emergency crews from all over the country are on their way to assist in the disaster response. All this while thousands of homes and businesses are being boarded up. And tonight the preparation and the evacuation. This storm is a monster. It's big and it's vicious. Hurricane Florence is intensifying as it rumbles towards the Carolinas. It is an extremely dangerous, life-threatening, historic hurricane. It's barreling towards an area not used to hurricanes this big. The Category 4 Florence is expected to become the most destructive hurricane to hit this far north on the East Coast since 1954. Forecasters say the storm has the potential to strengthen even more, too, and bring 157 mile per hour winds when it makes landfall. You've got to get off the beach. I mean, you know, there's nothing you can do. You're not going to stop that water. You're not going to stop the wind. If you don't get off, you're going to be a casualty. As people along the coast pack up and make their way inland, help from around the country is on the way. An Oklahoma utility company is sending dozens of trucks and workers to North Carolina. The biggest challenge is, is getting everybody there safely. Several states are also sending assistance. Help is coming from as far away as New York where the Red Cross is helping and California where firefighters have started the long trek to lend a hand. FEMA is ramping up preparations and gathering water, meals, and generators to distribute as needed. We are planning for devastation. It's going to dump mounts of water that, uh, that the area, some of these areas have not seen in, in a long, long time. Other news this evening. Congresswoman Claudia Tenney is joining eight of her colleagues in calling for support of a new drone pilot program in Rome. The letter went to the president, the FAA, and the DOT, the New York Unmanned Aircraft Systems Test Site wants to host the traffic management pilot program as well. And Tenney says that Griffiths and the region have the talent and infrastructure necessary to support the program. She says having this would bolster the economy and attract new jobs. Tenney is urging the FAA to pick Rome. Tenney's office says that the New York site has conducted more than 3,000 test flights. A New York state man from upstate is now a millionaire. 
from Washington County and he says he has his dog to thank. Dale Farrand says that he went to a Fort Edward convenience store last month to get a treat for his dog. Realizing that he had some extra money to spend, he opted to buy a scratch off lottery ticket. A few scratches later, Farron discovered his ticket was worth $10 million. Farron says that he knows exactly what he's going to do with that money. Take care of about 39 relatives that we've got between grandchildren and children, nieces and nephews, set up bank accounts for them so that they can have that for college. Farron also says that he's going to use the money to pay off the mortgage on the family home and hopefully the dog will get something nice as well. Why not, right? Coming up here tonight on News Channel 2 at 11, an inside look at the Otsego County Sheriff's primary where they have an actual two person race for the first time in 12 years. Also tonight, the new iPhone set to debut tomorrow. So tonight, what you can expect to pay. Phil. I'm tracking fog as we head into tomorrow morning, but the afternoon is looking nicer. I've looked at your forecast coming up.